Okay, next news. A p- Egyptian police use dating apps to imprison LGBT plus people in Egypt. In a crackdown on the LGBT plus community, Egyptian security forces are entrapping citizens using dating apps, throwing them into jail and subjecting them to systematic torture and abuse, according to the Human Rights Watch or HRW. Reportedly, police are creating fake accounts to meet people in the LGBT community, at which point they are detained and their phones are subjected to unlawful searches. One gay man reports that, quote, they beat me and cursed me until I signed papers that I was, uh, quote, practicing debauchery and publicly announcing it to fulfill my unnatural sexual desires, end quote. All 15 people interviewed by HRW reported various forms of torture and abuse while imprisoned, including forced virginity and anal exams. Okay, I don't understand. Like in, in many countries where they have these stupid laws, um, it doesn't make sense for them to go out of their way to catch these people. Unless there's a political motivation and people are really demanding. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like... They have it on the books, and if something becomes really obvious, they go after it. But other than that, they don't go hunting for it um, because it doesn't serve anyone's interest. So I don't understand what's happening at Rivka. It might serve a political interest in the event, in the case that even though nobody may be asking for it, if people are saying the police don't aren't doing anything, they're worthless, you know, they haven't you know solved any crimes. You could have the police themselves saying, hey, we need to make some arrests that people could get behind. Get on that gay app and throw some gays in jail and we can talk about how we're cleaning stuff up around here. Hmm. So that's a possibility. And I also think it serves an agenda to say that these people are equal to how you would catch other criminals. Like, for example, pedophiles is how people oh, a lot Rivka, of times do this. Rivka. Oh, did I we're use the bad get- word? Yeah, we're tr- we're trying to get monetized by YouTube here. These are not sorry the the yeah. bad p word. Too late. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's true. This is a sting operation that people do for that kind of criminal who are heinous criminals, and I think they're trying to equate that this is because they're saying practicing debauchery. So, you know, it could just be a points thing, saying, look, you know, we're cleaning things up. They're bad people, anyways. We're, you know, we're working for you. Or, as you're saying, maybe people are complaining about it, too. I don't know. Guys, be, please be very careful with the words that YouTube is that wouldn't like us to use. Okay, but go on, Susanna. Um, so, to use some of the language from the article, they're saying, in a brutal, brutal effort to clear the streets. So, when clearing the streets, I don't know, immediately what comes to mind is corruption in the land. Like, I think it's very much like, um, obviously, it's like a puritanical thing. Um, more, the article says, the attacks come amid a fierce anti-LGBT crackdown in the country following the 2017 uh, Mashrulia concert, when a picture of Sarah Hagazi raising a rainbow flag around, among the crowd was widely circulated. So we covered the story of Sarah not too long ago. She was quickly detained by the police who tortured her for months, incited fellow detainees to beat and sexually assault her. Um, Then she um, committed suicide recently after um, living in exile in Canada. Um, So this is persecution that's been happening of the LGBT community um, uh, in Egypt for a long time, but it seems like ever since there was this concert, there's been a renewed um, an intensified effort to um, persecute my community. So, so that me, you, oh. <laughs> so so you think there's there's a popular demand for this in Egypt, and that's why they're responding to the popular demand. Mm-hmm. Rights group said that since the concert, authorities have stepped up arrests and prosecutions of LGBT people using vague, discriminatory, quote, debauchery and prostitution laws. Egyptian authorities seem to be competing for the worst record on rights violations against LGBT plus people in the region. While the international silence is appalling, says Rasha Yones, HRW's LGBT rights researcher for the Middle East and North Africa. Um, Okay. 
So, and is there anything we can do to, no, right? Well, raising awareness about the fact that it is mm -hmm. such, um, becoming so in, uh, intensified recently is an important part of it, definitely. Right. I mean, these dating apps could do something to help verify, you know, I don't know. Should, should people just stop using these dating apps? I mean, like if I, I was there, I would not be on Grindr. Yeah. They're using Grindr. They're using Grindr? Yeah. Uh, but, like, it, can Grindr, like, do something to help the, the, these people? I mean, it's really difficult. You could just pretend that you're into this stuff and then... But these people are evil. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that it serves a twofold function, too, though, because a lot of these authoritarian regimes don't like the WhatsApp. They don't like the ability for people to communicate with each other and set up, you know, protests or people to communicate with each other in a way that, the, you know, that's not monitored or with people all over the world. And so or, or any of these sort of um, Internet, social media, chat rooms, meetups, all these places where people can do things that either the government doesn't want or that they say is you know, too Western or too much of an influence of non-Islamic values, all these things. So if you are getting rid of gay people and at the same time making people scared to use the WhatsApp or other meat sites, it kind of has a twofold purpose for them. And oftentimes I notice when they say they're cleaning up areas, I've noticed it's because they, they want to, you know, have a project or they're going to have you know, um, dignitaries come. A lot of times that's what I notice too. You know, they're cleaning something up, something's going on there. Or like I said, it's a way to show people that they're doing something. Um, so the thing with um, atheists, for example, being hunted down, at least what atheists get, because atheists don't, I mean, they like to meet each other face to face, but they don't really have to. It's mostly about sharing you know, you could completely be anonymous. You just want to talk to like-minded people about your views, about your struggles. And as much as it would be nice to meet people sometimes and have a drink with them or go out with them, like people that uh, kind of understand you, it's not really necessary. So you could be completely anonymous and talk to people. So they don't have to deal in this, in this example, they don't have to deal with what gay people have to deal with because gay people like, I mean, we have to meet, like, they have to meet each other, right? They're like, you know, I mean, you know, you, you need to, they have to find out, um, or else it's like, what's the whole point of coming out, right? Um, you know, you're basically well, missing out. I mean, one, again, I, there are other points, as I know, but, but one of the main importance of living a normal life is to be able to enjoy life the same way straight people enjoy life, right? So it's not enough for you to be able to go online and find other gay people and openly be like try exchange the views and be like, oh, yeah, oh, you're gay as well. I'm gay as well. No, like at some point you want that to escalate to actually meeting these people. Right. And that's why they're at more risk in that in this specific example than atheists, because atheists could always be like, you know, what? I, I'm good. We could just talk online forever. Um, yeah. What, so then you wanted to say something you were going to say, well, I don't think that's the only reason to be out. Um, I didn't say only, okay. It was like, okay, Maine. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I don't even know in Maine is you, anyways. Um, but I understand yeah. your point, especially like you want to be in relationship with people. You want to meet people. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be able to live like, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy the thing, same things like as easily as straight people do. So. Yeah, that's one of the main things. What are you talking about? Anyways, um, you're like, oh, like Susanna, like, sure, I'm, I'm part of the LGBT community, so you, I, she thinks like she's the ambassador. Did I of, say that? No, that's what you're thinking. You think like I, you get to. <laughs> I didn't pull that card on you. <laughs> oh you're God. thinking it. You're thinking it. Oh, now uh, you're going to speculate. <laughs> oh, you just need to be quiet and listen to her lived experience yeah, yeah, yeah. Of being part of LGBT community. Oh. Armin, yeah. don't Take mansplain it. I'm not mansplaining, I'm straight-splaining. 
These had this this heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> right. Um, here, let's read this comment with the 110. Do you want me to? Um, yeah. That's the so. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired of this. Uh, that, yeah. Yeah, that's the so called religion of peace for you. If we don't get a grip on it soon, it will happen in our own country in a matter of time. No, it's not going to happen oh in your gosh. country. I don't know where are you. Where is this person? Where is this? I don't it's, know. It's not going to happen over there. One, okay. And what is this with this comment that always gets the highest amount of likes and engagement? You guys are still like, is this the, is this not getting a oh, so-called religion of peace? Yeah, guys. Really, so Islam is not, oh, my God. Yes, Islam is not peaceful. Oh, yes, yeah, so-called religion of peace. God damn it. And why does this always get the highest amount of engagement? Like, you guys are not original at all. Like, this is like, it's been the... It's been like two decades now, and like I don't know, fresh material, people, fresh material, so-called religion of peace. Why is it? Yeah, but what about this person? Jasmine saying interesting that it's pretty much only men reaction with the laugh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on, like this is what you're paying attention to, Jasmine, and like going over the like, oh, look at the laugh. Oh wow, this one actually got a lot of reactions, four thousand reactions, right? Actually, most of the reactions are angry reactions, right? And she went to, so she decided to go spend the time on this news that is about gay people being oppressed in Egypt. And she's like, let me check the identity. Let me check the gender of the people who are doing laugh reactions. Oh, it's mostly men. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that the angry reaction is also probably mostly men because most of our audience is mostly men, Yeah. right? So... Here, look, the angry Jasmine is like, this is the, Jasmine is like focusing on the most important stuff, right? She's like, oh, the that what free reaction. What can I put people in? <laughs> yeah, like, oh my God, look at, men are so bad because most of the laugh reaction comes from men. Yeah, but the angry reaction is also coming mostly from men, Jasmine, you god you idiot. All of the reaction is mostly coming from men because atheists, because atheist pages are mostly followed by men. Jasmine, like seriously, these people are like ah, oh, really obsessed with people's biological identities. Anyways, 